After a long time waiting, I finally got more parts in. This is the gas tank, and listen to this. Doesn't sound good. I was waiting for the parts forever, but finally in this video we will do big progress. And the front wheel is next. Put some grease on here and the axle goes in. One side has this o-ring on and one has not. The o-ring side goes into the piston and the other pad sits here, like this. But first we want to close this clip, like this. And now put it on. Make sure it sits alright. And job done. And now this one goes in from underneath. I would like to mount the swing arm and for that we need to get these these kind of screws in here and because this frame got sandblasted and and coated and I think that we re didn't really cover up this thread here we got many little crumbs in there maybe you see that but we gotta get that out I want to start cleaning with a toothbrush and go ahead with a screwdriver and scratch it out. So let's see. And now we come to the thread. And I try to clean with a screwdriver. Now it's kind of clean and that's the best I can get. What was all the cleaning for? Yeah, right, for the swing arm, so let's try to mount it.
for now we leave the swing arm like that later on when the rear wheel is in and the engine with gearbox and everything is in the sidewall player of the swinger needs to be adjusted so we won't fix it now but at least it's in and I'm happy about that progress today get the rear wheel gearbox and we want to assemble this now all these parts seem to belong to that but I don't know how it's assembled actually so we want to find out how this is those are the brake pads for the rear wheel and it kind of works like a like a car brake but I'm not quite sure but first how does the gearbox work usually the the main gearbox is somewhere here and is attached to this part it goes through the swing arm to here and with this connection it's connected to this part and if you turn it, the wheel will turn. Then you don't need the chain, and yeah, the maintenance cost is lower. This part actually activates the brake pads, belongs in there, moves like this. And if we brake, what happens is exactly oh, is exactly this. They move up and down and press against the half of the rear wheel. But what we need now is the springs that belong in here. And actually, the hardest thing is to get these springs in. Whew. One is in, but the second not. And it's a really this one is really tough. Nah. Oh, no. Can't even pull it because I have to push and pull at the same time. Next try, but this time the wise holds everything. Maybe can get it in. No. Ah, what's the trick here? Oh man. Okay, that failed, so next try will be with the springs on and trying to get the pads on now, let's see. Okay, now that's how it's supposed to be. And now that the brake system is done, we can actually mount it to the swing arm. And very important here, before mounting the rear wheel, clean these pads. I got some grease on by accident and you don't want to have the grease on the brake pads. What do I use for that? Of course, brake cleaner. I'm really happy about what comes next because when the wheels are in, we can put it on its own feet. Yeah. And in goes the axle. It's not a size 22 and the rear wheel is finally in. Let's see if those carburetors need new parts. Like everything else they're not clean or anything and I really don't know how it looks inside. So let's just find out. We want to take it apart and see what's going on inside.
But these two screws are pretty tight and I don't want to destroy the heads. That's why we do something else. Now we can take them out easily and get to the membrane. We want to see if any gaskets are cracked or hard or don't move anymore or the membrane inside here doesn't move anymore or maybe there's a crack inside. That's what we want to find out and then we order new parts. So this is the flexible membrane that needs to move freely and without cracks. It looks good but I think I want to replace it anyway because it's 40 something years old. And yeah, I don't know if, if it was replaced ever before. So, yeah, better to buy this one new. The float ball is just held on with the clamp. So, we just loosen this clamp right there. And get to the float and the needle and everything else. Yeah, oh, see this? That's why I always, always open the carburetors and see what's going on. And here we got the needle. Because this thing always causes some headaches. Because leaking carburetor later on and so on. We'll replace that one definitely. I want to check the main jet. It's in here. See there's a rubber seal. So I think I will get a complete kit with everything and these o-rings and everything should be would come with that. But we will see. And this is the idling jet. Check that one again uh, as well. Just want to make sure that it's not clogged up. But this one looks good. Before we take it out, we check how many turns it was out. So now it's half, one, one and quarter turn. Now we know that, we take it out and check if it's dirty probably, yeah, a little bit, so we clean that. But nothing too crazy, the spring comes out. Usually in that hole there's an O-ring, but not on the Beamer one. So now it's... no. We take the choke thing out as well, because there's another gasket. And that's the gasket I was talking about. This is what the choke looks inside. I don't really know how it works. But, yeah, it's a little different on different carburetors. Hmm. Maybe you can explain. I don't know for now, but doesn't matter at all. In the end, it will work. And I don't know how it works, but... Ah, here, yeah, another reason why we take out the carburetors and check them, disassemble them. Because this o-ring is damaged and this can cause a really bad running bike. Just a small o-ring. So that's why we replace all the rubber parts. The new parts arrive today and we can mount them to the carburetor. So first we will replace all the o-rings. Ever wondered why it's important to replace all the o-rings? This is why. It's freaking hard. It's not even elastic anymore. Is this rubber? No, it's plastic. And this is why as well. It's just damaged and we replace it. This is the only elastic o-ring on this carburetor. Yeah, so we leave it on.
I used to use some grease on the o-rings, even on the carburetor. Just not to destroy them when turning the stuff in. Some do it, some don't. I do it. On this idler screw there was no o-ring on, no seal at all. And I think that's bad because air can pass by this part and can cause you a wrong mixture. So I have one o-ring from the kit left over and we'll put it on. All o-rings are replaced and this is what's left over. For dismantling I made some marks so I know what was where and how it was together. It's always pretty important because this was five minutes ago and already I don't know how it was. We will go ahead with the jets. No. Underneath the main jet this one goes like this. And now we want to check that float level. Parallel here. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. Mount float bolt. And mount this clamp. And don't hurt the fingers with the pliers. Ow. Yeah, like this. All the way on. Now we come to the choke mechanism. By the way, the wife just came in and asked why I am doing all this in winter time. When it's zero degrees outside. Actually, I do the work in the workshop when there's time. Not when there's good weather or warm weather or my hair is nice or anything. I do it when I got time for it. That's about it. Time to get to the other upper part. I decided not to replace these um, membranes because they are still flexible and look pretty good, have no cracks, nothing. And so we use them and you see here we got the nose which fits in here. Spring follows and this cover goes on. And because these screws were really hard to get out, I put some grease on and put them in. Carburetors, check! <laughs> I just found out something quite funny. I was always wondering, there was this air pump in this box. I was like, no, it doesn't belong to the Beamer. But see what I found out. It belongs to the Beamer. There's even a place for it here. Bam! There's the air pump. I don't know how long you pump with that to fill up these tires, but at least there's an air pump. After a lot of small fiddly stuff, we can finally mount this front fender. Fun fact, I thought this is made of metal, but it's not metal, it's made of GFK. 
It more and more looks like a motorbike. I really like that. And that's all we can do for now because I'm still waiting for the engine and I don't want to do any wiring or so. So we gotta wait for the engine and maybe in the next video the machine will run.